Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the July tip of the month. Today, I wanna to talk about getting better prints. Uh, what we hear a lot in the workshops that we do is, you know, the, the picture looks good on screen, but when I go to print, it comes back looking dark and muddy. The first thing I would have to say is if you want to get consistent prints from print to print to print, regardless of your surface, is you must calibrate your monitor. And the, the calibration software I'm currently using for my Mac, both my iMac that I'm recording this on and my MacBook Pro, is the On One Display Pro. And I do not have an affiliation where I can offer you a discount, but it runs about $150. Just every two months, go through, just do it on auto mode, run it through. It's going to keep your monitor calibrated. And regardless, if you have a home printer or what I've been doing oh, so much now for the last four to five years is I no longer print in my office, believe it or not. I send everything out to Bay Photo Lab, which used to be a physical lab located out here in the Santa Cruz area of California. They have moved to Scotts Valley, a little bit um, more north and east of downtown Santa Cruz, but they are one of the best online photo labs that uh, I have ever come across. So Bay Photo Labs, you can download their free Bay Rose software watch a couple of videos online and you'll be off and running. But let's get back to the print. And I've just returned from about a month uh, shooting over on the South Island of New Zealand. Gary Hart and I offered our first two international workshops um, in the South Island, which is their winter time. In fact, we went through winter solstice, which was kind of nice as America was going through summer solstice here which meant, uh, you know, sunrises at 8.30 a.m., sunsets at 4.50 to 5 o'clock range, not too bad. And we were able to slip in some night photography shoots, especially on the second workshop. And before I forget, we are going to host that workshop again. We had such success with both workshops. We're gonna do it all over again next June 11th through 20th. And we're already getting people signing up we highly encourage it. It's a 10-day workshop. Go to my website at www.donsmithphotography.com and check it out. And send either Gary or I an email and we'll give you any of the information you're not finding on the website. Okay, so back to the print. Now let's assume that you do have a calibrated monitor. The next thing I want you to think about is your background that you are viewing the picture against. You can see, and I'm gonna to refer to this as the surround, I've gone to a white surround. Now I'm gonna put the cursor out and I'm gonna right click. And this is, by the way, this picture that you're looking at is just a raw picture right out of Lightroom with zero adjustments. This is exactly how it came out of the camera. I wanna go ahead and click this to black, which immediately makes the image look a little bit brighter. Then for a long time, I was doing my prints against a kind of a medium gray tone, but uh, it was really a class I took, oh, about seven, eight years ago with Charles Kramer, a master printer out of the Santa Clara Valley, where Charlie talked about setting it to white surround. This all has to do with context and the way our eyes see things. And I'm gonna plan on doing some videos down the line where I get in depth on this more. But for the sake of this video, just try this out. In fact, if we take this image down a little bit here, and let me reduce the size of it, as I shrink it down more and actually put more white surround around the image, the picture looks darker and darker. Okay, so that's context. But what I'm going to teach you today is a way of going into what we call the lab mode. That stands for luminosity, A channel, and B channel. And it's really the luminosity channel that I'm gonna be interested in. And I picked this picture specifically to walk you through how I use this. And this was also something I have to credit back to Charlie uh, that I've learned through uh, 
listening to him, taking his classes, and um, watching some videos. Um, and it's something I've been incorporating now into my processing uh, of an image. And the reason I've selected this image, and let me give you some background on this image. This was captured, I believe this was our very first workshop that we did this past June. And it was the very first evening out. We were staying in Queenstown on the South Island, and we drove a road called the Drive to Glen Orkey. And if you're familiar with the Lord of the Ring trilogy movies and the Hobbit trilogy movies, uh, some of this area might look really familiar to you because they did a lot of filming down in this area. This lake here is Lake Wakatipu. It's the largest lake on the South Island and the second largest lake um, and now, excuse me, it's the third largest lake um, in all of New Zealand. Lake Wanaka on the South Island is, or excuse me, Lake Tiano, I'll get it there, <laughs> is the uh, largest lake on the South Island and the second largest in all of New Zealand. But it's this mass of dark hills here that's really going to um, help me illustrate my point. Now, if you've watched videos from me before, you know how important it is for me to set a white and black point. And up here, I'm in Photoshop currently, not in Lightroom, but this would work in Lightroom also. Let me click back and show you how to get in lab mode. Here's my histogram up in Lightroom. And if I just right click in Lightroom and I come down and I put a check mark here to say, show lab color values, which I've already done. I, I leave that clicked. You're gonna see that it gives me all my metadata. So you say, Don, where's, where's these uh, lab numbers that you're talking about? Well, you gotta click this little eyedropper and you start coming into the picture. Now, I don't want you to watch the square. I want you to let your eyes drift back up to the histogram just underneath. And you're gonna see as I'm going through this image with my eyedropper, the L is reading, well, there, let's, let's leave it there. There's 1.8, 2.5. I'm just in these darker tones. Now I'm gonna get up in these brighter tones and it jumps up to 76.3. So what does all of this mean? Well, good question. Okay, so the luminosity, and this is what we're gonna talk about today, is a range of numbers from zero to 100. Zero being absolute black, 100 being absolute white. The A value is the tint. And you can see if I move to the left here on the tint, that goes more into a greenish range. If I go to the right on the tint, it goes more into a magenta. And then the B is correspondent to the temperature range. So as I go into my minus values on the B channel, it would be more blue. As I go into the plus values on um, the, uh, the right of the temperature slider or the B channel, that would push everything more towards yellow. So my eyes cannot trust the context that this picture is in. And I'm gonna show you this again, it looks pretty good here. Let's get back over to Photoshop, same picture, but let's shrink this down again. I didn't want to put the crop tool on it, so let's not crop. <laughs> and as we reduce it down, fill it with more white surround, the picture becomes looking a little bit darker. So what this is telling me is I can't always trust my eyes, but I can trust the numbers. Okay, so where do we find the numbers when we're in Photoshop? Well, if you come on up here to Windows, you come down in here to Info, and you get an Info Palette here. And on the left of the Info Palette, it gives you a bunch of numbers as I move the cursor around in here. And it gives me red and green and blues, but you know what, that doesn't really tell me anything. But if I look over here in the LAB mode, and specifically the L, or Luminosity mode, you can see these clouds have a value of 24%. This is out of 100. If I come down in these dark tones now, it's getting down to two. I'm moving around. There was a three I saw jump up right there and a one even. So here's where I'm going with this. If I was to print this picture, typically the uh, L values that fall from six down to zero are going to print absolute black, even though we might think we're seeing a little bit of detail in here. Um, as we get to 7 to 10 range, they're just getting a little bit perceptible shadows. As I get into the 10 to 15 range, 
you're starting to see more of the shadows. And I'm going to show you a little demonstration in just a minute. But before we do that, let's jump over to the highlight side. Now I'm going to come up here in this little gap and that's telling me 98. That might be the brightest part of this image right about in there. As I move around, you're seeing it's dropping down to 97. Uh, I can come over into this area, 94, 97. What I've found in printing is that generally about 97 is as high as I want to go in my whites. If I print values 97 higher, it's going to go to almost paper white. So I want to make sure that I don't have any blown highlights. Now, I've done a lot of videos in the past where I've shown you how to set highlights and blacks on your, uh, in your basic tab of Lightroom, and I suggest you go back and review those if you haven't seen them. Uh, really what I want to talk about here is not so much the highlights, because we know how to control those, but these big bulky shadows. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of the info. Well, let's actually leave the info palette up because <laughs> we're going to need that in a moment. I'm going to come up here to the toolbar on the left and I'm going to grab L for lasso. And I'm just going to make a nice big loose. I, I, I think of L as loose selection. I don't have to be precise. Um, but anytime I do draw a selection, I'm going to want to right click and feather this selection. And I find 200 to be a good starting point. If it's something really big like this, um, I could go up to 300. I can come down in the 100 range, but usually just changing the values in increments of 100, 200 is a good starting point. That's a feather on the transition. Now we're going to come under our layer palette here. This is showing layer zero. If that's bothering you, I can come up to layer and we can flatten that and it will go to background. Uh, then I'm going to come down to this little ball-shaped icon, and I'm going to bring up a curves. And now you can see, let me click on um, the Alt and the Mask. Anything that's white is a selection. That's what's going to receive the change that I'm going to make. Anything that's black, black, white uh, reveals, black conceals. Anything that's right here going from white to black, that's that 200 point feather transition. Let's click Alt on the mask again. And what I'm gonna simply do is I'm gonna open the curves box here. Now, I wanna work with these blacks and I don't wanna disturb any of these neutral tones up in here. So I'm gonna do what we call a lockdown curve. Uh, this goes back a long time ago. If you've been a long time Photoshop user, you know what a lockdown curve is. And this simply means now, as I pull up on this curve, or I'm about to pull up, I don't pull up all the other values. And I'm just gonna pull slightly up to start to see um, some detail, at least our eye is showing us the details. Now, let's bring over our little friend, the info box, and let's start taking a look and even though we can see detail in here, look at those numbers. They're not changing a whole lot. They're staying at two. Well, that's because your mask is on there. Okay, so let's go ahead and just flatten the mask. Command or Control E. Now we're going to come back here and you're seeing that I'm starting to get some higher numbers. But they're still not up. Remember I said six or below is pretty much going to print black. So even though we can see detail in here, uh, we've got to open that up a little bit more. So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, let's close off on this box here. I really like the Tony Kuiper um, uh, luminosity mask. So they can seem overwhelming to people, but if you just get started with what Tony calls the rapid mask, and you can go to his website, www.tonykuiper.com dot com you can google him it'll take you right there you're going to see these three bars and these are really key especially the lights and the darks what we're going to do if i clicked on a number one darks it's going to turn this picture into almost looking like a black and white negative would look and it's going to remember the white values uh reveal so what it's going to show us is that the whitest what we're seeing to our eye is the 50 percent darkest pixels in this scene. Again, what shows white to our eye 
That's what we're going to work on are the 50% of the darkest pixels in this image. If I clicked on two, that's now the 25% of the darkest pixels, 12.5%. Whoops, I skipped over four. Let's come back to four. That's going to be six and a quarter. Let's just say six. And if we go down to five, that's about th representing about 3% of the darkest pixels. So where do you begin? Well, I really kind of let my eye look more up on what's going to go black here because I want to protect all of that. So I keep clicking through till I can get that sky pretty black. And there we go. And this is still light enough. Now I'm still in the Tony Kuiper Rapid Max box. I'm going to just come down here to select. That's going to put a nice little feathered mask. It's self-feathering around all of the darker images. And now I'm going to go back and grab another curves. And now when I pull up on this curve, it's only going to be affecting the blackest parts of the image. So I'm going to come way down here to where this data mask ends, or this data peak rather, and I'm going to come up. And you can see it's getting a little flat in there. So I usually will come up about one quarter. You can see that the curves box is divided into quarters here. Come up about one quarter line, and I'm going to steepen that curve. And when you steepen a curve, you add back the contrast. Okay, so now let's go ahead and flatten that. Take this box away so we're not getting confused on what box we're looking at. We're, we're wanting to look down here in the lab mode and I'm going to come back in and now look at those L values. I've gotten them up over six. In fact, I've gotten them, gotten them, there's a seven, that's, that's where I'm saying that would just be the first hint of going from black and the transition, and I'm thinking that that's looking really pretty good for the shadows. Um, so that's how we go ahead and use the lab values to um, tell us what's really going on in our prints. So again, three things I wanna remind you of. Please uh, keep your monitors calibrated. Number two, white surround, and we're gonna do more videos on the lab channel and a context, and maybe that will be next month's video. And then number three, get familiar with this lab um, luminosity values and learn the ranges. And just remember six and under, too dark, even though it may show to your eye that um, it looks good. So let's just, let's just come back before I end this. We're gonna come back in. You can see I actually, um, I, I straightened this image up a little. It was, this is what we call um, perspective distortion, where really it looks like it's tilted, but it's just the line of the lake running away from me. But nonetheless, if it looks tilted, I fix it. And, um, you know, that could look pretty good. But when we open it up now, now we've got a pretty good range of values working from dark to light. So that's it. Uh, practice with this. It's something that does take a little bit of practice and wrapping your brain around. I do highly suggest the Tony Kuiper masks. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, easy to use. If you really use nothing more than the, the lights and the darks and the selection tool, it'll save you so much time in masking your images. And so until next month, uh, this is Don Smith. I hope you take a look at our workshop offerings coming up. Very excited about this year. I have Namibia coming up. Uh, next month and we're sold out on that and then we have two spots open Ron Modger and I are going to be doing a workshop in Patagonia in February and I still have two spots open for that uh, along with some of our domestic um, workshops that I do by myself and with Gary Hart take a look www.donsmithphotography.com I would like to add one more little thing here um, if you go to the discounts and affiliates, I am now an affiliate with a company out of Auckland, New Zealand called um, Focus Magic. And I have done a video on that software and I plan to do some more. Uh, you will receive 10% discount. It's my number one way of sharpening images now. It's an awesome software, Focus Magic. Check it out. Until next month, take care. Yeah.